I was 42 looking at 43 when I went into the system. I came out at 70 looking at 71. All the time I did in prison, every day I thought about my victim and the victim's family. My children are all grown and have families of their own, and their families have families of their own. And 27 years have passed by. Coming outside at my age, I didn't know what I was going to do. Where am I going? I was blessed to be accepted into Providence House and moved to Coney Island. There's eight rooms here for women transitioning out of prison. It's temporary living. If it wasn't for Providence House, I'd have been looking at going into a shelter. I found myself with two nuns that I just adore and a garden. And two blocks from here is the beach. I found a lot of peace here. I was in a very abusive situation. It turned into a real nightmare. There was a struggle, and I shot him. I knew when I went home that night I was going to jail. I stood before the judge's bench, and he sentenced me to 25 to life. I have six daughters. And as the years go by, your children grow up and move on with their lives. My hardest time came when my daughter was misdiagnosed. She fought a three-year horrible battle with stomach cancer. When she got sick, I couldn't go to her. It created a hole in me. She was 35 when she died. I was totally shattered. I decided that I was going to do the best I could within the walls for my victim, for his family, and for my own children. For me, the education was my springboard. I got my GED, then my bachelor's, and then I moved ahead and got my master's degree. For most of my life, I was told that I, I was stupid and I found out that I wasn't. I started developing programs, anger management, losses, bereavement programs, adolescent programs. I mean, people do change, and they change because it's a choice. Inside, I was a leader and mentor, and people came to me. Coming out, it was reversed. It's wonderful being free, but it's, it's already very challenging. It's like a child learning to walk. I applied at Macy's. I went through an interview process. All they wanted to know about was the crime. And they were equal opportunity employer. All I was applying for was a retail job. That was it. Being turned down because of my background, it's not that easy. Even if you walk around with a smile on your face, you don't know what's behind that smile. There's a lot of sadness. How was your day? Uh, my day was fine. How was yours? Uh, you know, it could have been better. It's like everything, you know, looking for jobs, looking for apartments. It's the same thing, the same story. It's always my criminal background keeps me out. Um, and then Shake Shack, I was mm -hmm. interviewed. What they're looking for is younger people. Mm -hmm. It just is crazy for me. Kind of reached a point of 
What am I going to do? Just uh, take one step at a time, and I think things are going to work out very well for you. Thank you, sister. I'm going to go um, change, welcome. take a yeah. shower. Yeah, good, good, good. And I'll good. see you for the news right. and RT. Right, that's right. Okay. That's it. I'll be ready. <laughs> Fortune Society supports people like myself coming out. So I think what I'm better off doing is going to Fortune. And hopefully, through Fortune, I'll, I'll be able to find employment. I hope this works out, because I really need that job. Miss Cutting, uh, basically, I wanted to sit and talk with you, see, touch bases, see how everything is going with you. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm very jazzed about okay. this whole process. Nice. I tried to go off on my own when I first came out because I was trying to find employment first, which that took a header right away. Because <laughs> uh, they always look at background checks and that, and uh, it really, I live in the real world most of the time. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I never thought it would be that difficult. Coming home after doing 27 years, you already have a huge barrier in terms of going out there and securing employment. Your background alone, your criminal background alone is a barrier. Um, your age is a barrier in the eyes of most employers. Um, technology is a barrier. I don't want you to be discouraged. Just come with me. We will walk you back. Hello, how you doing? Good afternoon, sir. Okay, good to see you. You're here for an employment program, is that correct? Yes, it is. All right, how about we start getting some paperwork done on you? And uh, welcome to Fortune. And Thank I'm just going to ask you some pretty easy questions. What do you think would be an ideal work situation for you? Give me some sense of where, where your thoughts are on that. Um, well, I, I like doing, I like working with people oh, okay. and helping sure. people. The employer will know that you have been away in jail for some period of time. They are very good about working with, with our clients that we refer to them. And, and you, I think you will find you will get a great deal of support. I have already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love being here. I will always call this home. While we are not pushed out until we certainly have our feet on the ground and have a place to go, we have to keep in mind we have to look for a place to live. I was supposed to meet with two guys. I was up front with them that, you know, I had just been released from prison. The one guy said he didn't want to live next door to a killer. The next guy didn't want one day to sell his apartment and have it depreciated because of his neighbor. I was really crushed. So I put my uh, packet together for community access, Providence House Permanent Living. But now I had to wait for an opening, which is a long process. You go through interviews doesn't mean until you sign a lease that you're getting a place. So every morning I'd go out, say a prayer with the Holy Mother and take roses to her. Hi, Tam. How you doing, hon? Well, I just wanted to check in and see how you're doing. Everything's going well here. Hopefully, I'll be able to visit for the holiday, and uh, we can make plans from there. Yeah. I love you. Mm. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye, hon. Really good news. I got accepted to Community Access, uh, Providence House Permanent Housing. Um, this has been a long time. Yes, it is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 
it's so great to see that transition and here you are today so I'm, I'm really happy about that so these were your keys oh thank you <laughs> all right I'm gonna miss this place so much. I'm gonna miss my nuns, and I said I will be home on the weekends. I'm gonna miss the garden. This is my world. Okay, he got everything in there. All right, all right. You gonna call me back? Okay, thank you. All right. So he's gonna call back and call the supervisor. So let's get moving over there. And my wonderful nuns gave me things. Friends gave me a TV. My fish. Yeah, I got four of them. Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> I, mm, I love you, sister. I love you too. I'm gonna miss you. And you're coming back. Of course yeah. I am. I'm so used to seeing you every day. Right, right. <laughs> Bye now. I love my nuns. There's only three ways to go. You can go backwards. I'm not going backwards. You can stay stuck. I'm not doing that either. Uh, but I'm moving ahead. <laughs> Freedom. You're home. I'm home. <laughs> How are my fish doing? Yeah, hi guys. Yeah, it's rough, huh? My fish are in shock. This to me is like everything I've ever thought about inside because it's got light at the end of that tunnel. Nice. Put it right there. It's coming about. Yes. My first visitor! <laughs> Your first apartment! <laughs> I'm headed to Fortune Society. I just have had two recent interviews. I'm really nervous. Hi, Bula. Hi, how, how are you doing? doing? Very good. I like that smile. Yes, I like yours too. So tell me, how do you feel that interview went? I just feel really confident, not overly, because I think that's a dangerous thing to do, but I'm very optimistic about this. Uh, and I so appreciate, you know, your involvement in this. It was an honor. I mean, you touched me from the moment I met you. She called me right after the interview. She said I absolutely love her. As far as the computer skills, she's willing to work with you. So we're going to partner with her where you can go work there. She want to train you up and so that you could learn the operations there. And hopefully after that, she will hire you. Oh, that's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so much, You're really. Welcome. Now that I'm out, I'm on a mission to help others. People shouldn't be aging in prison. And I look at uh, over the years how many women have died in prison. That's such a waste. That's such a waste. I'm going to Riverside Church. Well, here we are. And present what it was like to be in prison. We have left so many women inside that deserve that second chance. And a lot of them are aging in prison. Some of them die in prison. And where do we have the cutoff point and where do we start deciding on what's enough time? And that's what we are trying to do now, bring awareness. Thank you. I really, I really took a lot away from this. So thank you. 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 I love the nuns at Providence House, and I just love it here. My second eldest daughter, Wendy, right before she passed, she uh, said she'd see me at the beach. There 
was a guy at Fortune Society, and he'd done like 30 some years. So he's talking, well, you don't know what it's like. I says, well, I kind of do. <laughs> so when I told him out of conversation, he says, no, I would have never picked you out of a crowd, you know, the way you're dressed, the way you look. You look like that sweet grandmother, you know. I said, well, I am, actually.